Welcome, Chosen One. What's up, assholes? Welcome back to the Gwent. It is the video game which I sometimes play. I've been gone for a while. I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not going to apologize for my behavior. All right, I'm I'm entitled to do other things. I've been busy. It's fine. But I really wanted to try to do a video now. This on this fine evening. And you know, we've gotten some new cards. That that's the thing. We've gotten two new cards. I I guess they're all legendary for each faction. Uh, which is very cool. Um, some definitely more interesting than others. Some definitely more powerful than others. Uh, as far as I've been able to, to, to tell, they're already working on a uh, hotfix for for some of the things that were introduced with this patch, uh, including Onslaught giving way too much armor when combined with like certain cards, I think. As well as Radovitz's interaction with, I guess, Uprising. I haven't been paying too much attention, but uh, you know, I've been looking into things. I've been, I've been trying to keep up. But as for monsters, which is obviously what we're going to play today, as you can tell, vampires got some love, and that's always nice because vampires has been a, a fan favorite archetype. I've been really into it. I love tribal gameplay in, in, in card games. And vampires, it's just, it's through and through. It's vampires. And, you know, they love blood. Bleeding. It's always been interesting. Uh, they got two new legendary cards the last time. We got a dump of 12 cards. And this time they got an, another one. Regis Reborn. Deploy, drain an enemy unit by three. I believe drain now ignores armor. So it's like, boom. Three damage to you. I boost myself by three. He's one power, so that's that's seven points. But uh, of course, for every turn, while he's in our hand or our deck, as long as there's an enemy unit with bleeding on the board, his base power goes up by one. So, you know, assuming, you know, you get a normal game of Gwent can be like, you know, it's around 16 turns. If Regis is your last card. If you have bleeding on the board every single turn, which is technically possible if you go second, stuff like that. You know, he can increase his base power by 15. You know, like, like I think 14 is very reasonable. I know there are some some no unit decks out and about with the with the new Milva. So in that case, maybe not so good. But, you know, you don't need that much for him to at least be fine, right? And he's a finisher. He's a finisher. He's a short round card for vampires who normally have been relying very heavily on long round, you know, powerful, but, you know, requiring a long round cards like Oriana, Detlaf, Unseen Elder. Vampires also got some buffs and some reworks. Fletter now ditches the whole, uh, the whole vitality thing. Uh, it's now a six provision engine, and we know how how those have been lately. Strong. When bleeding is applied to an enemy unit, boost south by the amount applied. Counter one, so you can't use all three leader leader charges at once, and then boost your flutter by nine. But you can use one, and it goes up to seven. Next turn, use another one. It goes up to ten. Why, why they made this change? And seemingly didn't add the same counter to Messenger of the Sea. I'm 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 unclear. Cause those cards aren't too different, you know. Maybe maybe at least counter two. Like it's like they obviously have an answer to to this type of design being potentially overpowered, but they didn't implement it on the card that has this design and is maybe a little bit overpowered. It's okay, never mind. Alp went up to four base power. Necoret went up to four base power. Making both of these very good. Alp is a potential 10 for five. Necoret is a six for five immediately and then can be 
you know, apply two bleeding every turn if you keep playing vampires. Very nice. Uh, almost every card in here is a vampire or, you know, like a card that gets us vampires. Or Blood Moon that makes makes blood. I threw in some NL Conquerors because I needed four provisioned cards. And uh, we are Devotion, so just slamming seven points is, is a nice way to go about it. Like, there aren't too many other options that are... That are really like good like feast of blood you know it's, it's a vampire synergy it's bleeding maybe the purify is good in like a veil heavy meta but it's nice uh, it's not that good and toad prince who a couple of months ago i believe became a good card and we have our bleeding so we can prevent him from breaking even we can set him up with some precision bleeds is he gonna be good i don't I, maybe not like, we generally don't want to kill too many things. Like, that's the thing with vampires. You can't remove all your opponent's cards. You have to let them live. But in return, you're supposed to get a huge payoff for just making them bleed instead of killing them. You know? And Toad Prince goes against that. But it's nice to have something. You know, it's, it's a cool card. I think it's nice. And, uh, yeah. Sorry, it's been a while. Uh, I'm gonna set up my cosmetics. And I'll see you in the gameplay. I'm gonna play some vampires. Hopefully, have a good time. I kind of doubt it, because I haven't played in weeks. And, uh, people have been testing new cards while I've been busy doing boring stuff. But enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. And let the gameplay commence. Alright. Nilfgaard. I gotta say, Nilfgaard's new cards were some of the more disappointing ones, in my opinion. Ardal is is interesting. Calvate is... I feel like, like when I'm playing Nilfgaard and when I'm playing against Nilfgaard, they have no problem drawing their cards. Like they're good cards, so I, I don't know if it's all that necessary. Double Plumar, huh? Guess we don't want him around one. Because it's a fairly, fairly bad card early on. We're going second, so if we can just keep applying some bloody pressure. Oh god. Why? Why? Attention, please. I shall now speak. Why? <laughs> Okay, we're playing against uh, Mill, presumably. With Sunset Wanderers. Or is it just... No, it's pure Mill. It is pure Mill. I was hoping for some normal games. I was hoping to not definitely not get my Regis Reborn. Milled. They just got both my Bruxes. Interesting. Synergy. A lot of nice new effects. I like that. Okay, they play Assassination. I didn't know that. Not playing too many units. I think that laugh. I would have liked to have seen more units. On the board. I guess I do have this. They don't have the second assassination. I, I did not lose a point by doing that. Oh god. That's not too bad. So if we can get that down to uh, a certain amount of bleeding here. 
That'll be interesting. We're gonna get a big Regis. And then he's gonna get milled. I should have kept him in my hand. Don't take Regis. That's fine. I don't want her. All I need is Regis. There's a lot of bloodshed on this board. Are they gonna lose on even to keep the wanderers or are they gonna keep pushing me? They're gonna they're gonna pull the trigger. I don't mind it. Especially if they're done milling me. I mean they're not entirely done. They're never done. As long as there are cards in their hand and cards in their deck. They're never quite finished. But I am definitely playing Detlef now. Let's see, he wants adjacent vampires. So the fact that I've been playing it like this is actually... I, I didn't even know that. I haven't played for weeks. And even then, when was the last time I played... Vampires. Could go for Elder instead. I have a lot of bleeding going on here. I messed up the sequencing there. That's fine. Let's see. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna lose one. I go to twenty. But then he puts bleeding two, and I get at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is hot. That is hot. Oh, that... That is so... Oh, that is so good. Regis. He's at 8. Please. I, I, I just want to draw him. Let me just draw my boy so he's safe. Okay, no. That's not, not quite it. Yes. Regis. Alright, bleed out the wanderers. Let's see, also not a vampire. We gotta remember, we need vamps. We need a rinky dinky dinks. Not even doing it. I mean, against this, it's probably my best Toad Prince. No Scorch, no Scorch. We go. Alright, I gotta... Play this before it's dead. This obviously sets up... Him pretty well. Like with with Regis and the new Flitter and stuff like that, we are getting close to having enough payoffs for just spamming bleeding. Yeah, I knew this match would end in a similar way to what just happened. 
I knew that from like turn two. I suspected it from turn one because of the Treyarn. But I've seen people in the past randomly play that, but the rest of the deck isn't really mill. But when I saw that it was definitely pure mill, I knew. Kids, don't play mill. Also, don't lose to mill. Both of those are very avoidable, so just... As long as it's not Melusine and Dagger again, I'm fine. I dislike this less. But still. Aced. Really? Okay. See what we can do. Man, if I just had Heat Wave for that unprotected Melusine, life would have been good. But no. I'm playing Devotion. And not just any Devotion. Monsters Devotion. Here we go. Look at that. Look how fun this is going to be. Playing King Bran, obviously, which is cool. I like that one. I like that card. I promise you a quick death. Well, now I sure have plenty of uh, bleeding targets here. I am going to start with... That one. The cooldown reduction when you apply blading, I like that. That's cool. That's very cool. The only time Skellige can go several turns without killing your stuff is when they're spending those turns doing discard stuff. So now we can do this. And then we apply the bleeding, which reduces the cooldown. So we can do this. Everything's good. Reaches is on his way to be reborn. Alright. Okay, we'll need some powerhouses. And I am thinking... Oriana... Will she go to seven? Seven is good. Especially with both the pingers not being able to ping alongside a uh, stunning blow, gunning slash. You know. Uh, 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 let's just put a bunch of bleeding on the board. Get Oriana dancing, you know? Get her dancing. She eats some kids, then she dances. To the beat of the bleeding triggers. Hmm. So strange seeing this symbol, but I I like it. You know, for for uh, single use order effects, I like it. Oh, here he is. Well, 
shit just got a lot less scary. If I just pop down him, how are we looking? Like if I just do this, right? And then we do this. We put that there. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. I didn't do the complete math. But I did some of it. <laughs> Alright, smart, smart. I've never seen Ace's uh, ability actually do the thing. I knew it did the thing, that when something died, it came back. But I've never seen anyone actually do that. Gotta say, I love it. If I just purify my boy here. And honestly, just do this. Again, not doing the math, but feeling more com confident this time than last time. Because we now have three more points, but we lose two. But then we get a few more points after that. I, I did enough math to at least allow myself to hope that would work. And it did. And I could not be happier. Okay. Detlef. God damn it with the plume arts. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, I mean, warriors still are kind of scary in a longer round, right? So, and I have a lot of cards that kind of fall behind in the, but I've spent Oriana and Elder, but I have Crimson Curse, Regis Reborn. Both my flatters. I don't usually go into long rounds against warriors, even when I'm playing a long round deck. But I'm feeling good about my vampiric buddies here. Me or me. <laughs> this is such an interesting card, because the way the boost increase works it's it's just cool it's very interesting can i get one flatter thank you that's all i ask one flatter and your boy's good i just gotta thicken up reginald here They have some Veil, which sucks, really sucks, but we have potentially six points from our leader. They have no leader. We have a point advantage. As long as there's blood on the field. That's scary. That is very scary. Uh, 
Let's see. How about Flatter and Leader Charge to get the three boost? No reason not to. There are enough turns. There's enough body. Regis. I'm thinking Gale is going to be my Nagofar. I don't think Crimson Curse... I mean... Maybe it's five turns. It is five turns. The veil and the armor. Oh, that's probably better here. Should probably play this Bruxa soon. There's Cripple. Yeah, the Veil is not great. Uh, I could. I mean, I want to set up some uh, some some debt left stuff here. We're probably just doing that. Uh, I guess. Uh, I don't know. It, Vampires have some tricky cards to get, try to get value from. And I'm not doing the best job either. Okay. Like, if I can get that down to three, can I do four damage to that? He can do three. So I just need to bleed it for one turn. Then it goes to six. Then I played that. It goes to three. Eh, it's actually. Ah, uh, still good. Thick Regis. Thick Regis. I think we can uh, safely consider Regis to be reborn. Alright, two wins, one loss. Not too bad for my first day in a while. John Cor, NR. Ooh, we're gonna get to see what NR is abusing. 
Everybody's abusing something. Now it's just this. But probably with Henselt. And maybe rat of it. You can You can definitely rat of it with this. Uh away with you. All three of the big bombs? No, thank you. But then I have to Moloch in one. No, this is not good. This is not good. I think... Uh, double Plumart. Double Plumart. Wow, you must have gotten some sucky options. We have each other's backs. That's more than most. Oh no, wait. No, no. This works retroactively. You better believe that shit works retroactively. Well, at least uh, uh, I have time to try and kill it. Oh god. Oh. Right. All right. No, not this. To win Viandra. Well, well, well. We can do it. No, 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 no. Dead laugh. Well, it took four goddamn mages to kill, to kill my bro. All right, that's a problem. At least the alumni played for six points. I guess seven if you count that the shield blocked one bleeding, so. Not a great rune worked. Ha 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 ha. Talk about getting fricked, boy. We're doing okay. But of course, I will have no answer to their actual antics. Like, this is just their bullshit that they're just throwing at me. Their actual cards have yet to come. And once they do, nothing I can do. Alright, that's a lot of patience. I mean, they're just playing bronzes, dude. I don't want to play Oriana.
Uh, Regis, you're at eight. Eight. Eight plus six, that's a comfortable 14. Not quite enough, but we'll get there. Two and six. They got one doing six. Doing the six. Well, six is not eleven. The worst part is, I'm not going to draw Regis round three. That's the worst part. He just straight up boosted by three, didn't he? That's nice. It did get a provision nerf. Oh my f well, no zeal. Oh yeah, he, he hadn't even played a card yet. I, uh... Forgot that part. Hadn't even played a card yet. Well. No, I'm not not spending that leader charge. <clears throat> not quite there yet. I had more upsets with killing this than this, just so you can shuffle it back in. Draw it again. Doesn't have zeal. Alright. Spawn a vampire. Not that. You do that. You do that. Put on some there. That's fine. Okay, alumni are definitely doing zeal now. I don't know if even drawing reaches is gonna help me much. I actually have uh, that. Oh, 
I'm hoping to trade bad cards for better cards. That's just a lot of points. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I have to spend my leader charge because that gives me seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And they have no... No. Oh, shit. It's just 16. It's just 16. No! No, no, no! They have. Uh, I I had to forget about this, huh? I I I'm pretty sure I've lost anyway, but that just. Uh, oh. That's what happens when you don't uh, read up on some new cards. Yeah, I, I don't even have my dudes. I mean, even if, even if the card hadn't been, see, I'm not even getting this. Even if I hadn't been a card down, and uh, the card I had, even if that had been Regis, I don't see this ending well. Regardless. Especially when, uh, when my card here is Gale. Well, now I'm starting to think that maybe... Maybe Regis would have, uh... Meave? Okay, so if I hadn't uh, just thrown away my last card, I would have won. Because... God damn you, Henselt. Henselt. And that one boost. <laughs> it's a new card, okay? It's a brand new card. My first time playing against it. Like, I've looked at all the new cards. But even that was like a week ago. When did the patch come out? Was it a week ago? Yeah. It was, it was Thursday. It was, it was a week ago. It, tomorrow it'll be a week ago, right? It was Tuesday, the 7th. Yeah. So, that's my excuse. But as you saw, if I hadn't been an idiot, I would have won that last match. But I was an idiot. As I often am. As many of us often are. And it cost me the match. Although... 
we could also say if my opponent hadn't been a weirdo with Queen Meeve in their mage deck. And their last card would have been worth more than 7 points. Then. I could have still lost. You know, it's, it's easy to, to look back at a game and be like, okay, if this happened, I would have won. If this happened, I would have lost. But realistically speaking, that game could have gone either way. If they hadn't had a weird card, or if I hadn't missed missed that one point from Henselt. Mm, oh, I hate Henselt. I hate Henselt now. He is my mortal enemy. He has a stupid beard. I hate him. I think it's a very cool card. I like his ability. But this is personal. Hand self, fuck you. Anyway. Vampires. It definitely struggles with the same things that a lot of Devotion decks struggle with. You can't play Heat Wave. And especially when it comes to monsters, devotion monsters, yeah, you have very few options in terms of thinning, tutoring, removal. That being said, you know, I am personally under the impression that, you know, not every deck should need a bunch of removal. And, you know, this is partially, like, because they print some very, very powerful cards that are very must-answer or you probably lose. Like, because of cards like that, uh, decks will often require a lot of removal to be playable or, or competitively viable. But, you know, there are ways... There are types of decks that work without a shit ton of removal. And in the, these are the decks that instead of removing your opponent's threat, you just play your own. And it's about being being smart about what, what to commit, what to preserve. Uh, you know, using the rounds, the round system to your advantage. Maybe you have some nice little tech cards that, that is often clever. You know, it's just about knowing, you know, the circumstances, the situations under which your cards are better than your opponent's cards, and vice versa. And I think with with some of these new new cards and new buffs that vampires have gotten, you know, especially with the flatter, I think. You know, vampires are one step closer to being an archetype that can rely less on killing everything the opponent plays and instead just trying to one-up it. Because, you know, vampires revolve around bleeding and having a lot of bleeding, as much bleeding as you can, without going over the top, of course. And in order to do that, in order to to sustain that type of playstyle, you you have to let your opponent's cards live. And that's scary. You know, I, I love playing these types of decks. They're, they're some of my favorite types of decks. But they're scary to play. It is scary to, to click that play button and queue into a match knowing that my deck does not have an answer to shit. And, uh, you know, you just, like, these archetypes, they should definitely exist. I think it's a perfectly viable viable way to play. It's one of my favorite ways to play. You, know, you just got to make sure that, you know, these types of decks, you know, have the power potential to just match the opponent's greedy shit. Like, greedy deck versus greedy deck, you shouldn't need removal. Like, it shouldn't be about removal. Like, okay, greedy deck, control deck, 
Okay, I kill your things. I kill your things. You can't do shit, but then again, I'm not making a lot of points either. We just have different play styles, but they are in a way evenly matched. And then it's greedy deck versus greedy deck. Okay, you do your bullshit, I do my bullshit. And we'll see who comes out triumphant. And, you know, giving vampires, you know, stuff like Flutter, that... And you know, even Catacan, I think, is... I mean, a Catacan is not a greedy card. It's not. It's... Like, it's... It doesn't have even the potential to be a, a three turn... A three points per turn engine. Like, it's... It's three points every two turns if you're applying bleeding every turn. So, like... It's it's not a powerhouse. It is not just vomiting out points. But it's cool. It's cool. Honestly, cooldown three doesn't sound too shabby to me. But yeah, vampires. Um, always been a fun archetype. Always been interesting. It is now better than ever. There's no doubt about that. It's more interesting than ever, I think. I uh, got some well-placed buffs. It got a much-needed rework to Flitter. Uh, I'm not... I wouldn't say much-needed, but definitely more flavorful version of, of Catacan. I mean, the last one had Thrive and Deathwish. And now it's just, boom. You want to play a vampire deck? You play a lot of bleeding? Well, here is a vampire that makes other vampires, and he does it faster if there's a lot of bleeding. It's, it's a much better card for vampires. And Regis Reborn is the short round finisher that... You know, it's a payoff for constantly having bleeding on the board. And, you know, vampires have never had issues constantly having bleeding on the board. They've always had enough bleeding. Not always enough units to place it on, but they've always been able to have bleeding somewhere. They just need a payoffs for it. And now we have a really good one. Regis himself, Mr. Journeyman. Anyway, I've been talking for way too long, but uh, I... I'm just gonna assume that a lot of you are okay with that because I've been gone for so long. And now I'm here. We played some vampires. All in all, verdict. Better than ever. Probably at least playable. And it is fun. It is definitely fun. And the fact that it's so flavorful definitely adds to the fun. You know, for me I love I love synergistic cards, I love flavorful cards. And this is, this is tribal gameplay at its best. This is using, you know, just a category. You know, just just the fact that it says vampire here, and the fact that it uses the mechanic called bleeding. Like it's just two words, but they're used in ways that just make sense. And for anyone who likes, you know, the Witcher series, or they just like vampires in, in fiction. You know, they will look at this and they'll be like, oh, yes, I'm playing vampires. And and I'm making all these people bleed. And vampires love blood, so they get better. They get strengthened. Oh, they're drinking that blood, baby. I love flavorful cards, okay? Um, Toad Prince. Probably gonna cut him. It's a good card. But it's it I don't think it's a good fit. I do not think it's a good fit. Neither is anything else here. Okay. Thank you for watching the video. Uh have you been playing some vampires? Uh do let me know down below if you have any alternate deck lists, any tips or tricks on how I could play this better. Because I, I enjoyed this. I really wanted to play Vampires for quite quite a while. Now I did. Once again, it was great. 
and I would definitely like to repeat this. So let me know if, uh, if there are any improvements I can make on this, because I know that I know there are. Just let me know what they are, okay? Let's, let's not be bitches here. Let's not be sassy bacchus. Sassy or sassy. And let me know what else I should play. Um, I'm... I am very keen on playing some pirates with Onslaught and stuff. But I'm going to wait for the hotfix, because the leader is currently working in a way that the developers don't want it to. And in a way that is severely advantageous to the person playing it. And you, you, know, you guys know I don't roll like that, so I'm going to hold off on that until whenever the hotfix is. Um... But, you know, I could definitely play some Warriors with King Bran. And, you know, honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of Scoia'tael. The faction has grown on me lately, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. And especially no unit is very down there. In terms of uh, my uh, top favorite decks. It's very far down. I think both of the new Scoia'tael cards are actually really awesome. So if you have any more ethically uh, justifiable deck lists using either or both of those two cards, I would be down to play some Scoia'tael. I think Milva is a very interesting design, and uh, that Saskia is just... It's got to be dope. It, it looks really dope. Anyway, it's, it's good to be back. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it won't be as long until next time. Speaking of next time, until then, have a good one. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Hope you're all doing well. I know there's, uh, there's been some, some uprising in the pandemics out and about. Hope you're all doing well. So far, I'm perfectly healthy. Hope you are too. Until next time this hand. Bye. Still got it. <laughs>